five minutes with Lisa. You know, I get these emails all the time and I figure it would be easier to offer advice and mentoring to people um, through video so that many of you could benefit from what one person writes to me. This time I got a wonderful email from a gentleman in Eastern Europe and he says, good news! We've gotten our teams to use Scrum. I've convinced the organization this is the way to go and I've been a Scrum Master and I know that my path is to become an Agile coach. Uh, the problem is that support for it isn't exactly full. You know, the managers kind of maybe support it, but it's not really clear. And I'm having trouble with the developers and the development team being able to really embrace it. All right, so this is the situation he's got. And it's not unusual at all. Um, the other piece he asked was, hey, is it normal for Agile coaches or Scrum Masters to be involved in picking the people for the team? So that's part of what's going on in here too. So let's take that piece first, then we'll come back to the bigger issue. So, yes, it's completely consistent with Agile values and principles that team members, Scrum Masters, Agile coaches would all be involved in self-selecting for teams. That's completely consistent with Agile values and not widely practiced in most organizations yet. So most of the time, as Agile coaches or Scrum Masters, we get what we get. We just get who we get, and we don't have a choice about it. And really, they don't have a choice either. They just get thrown together as a team and like, boom, here, here, here you go. So given that that's the case, it's useful to understand that Agile is asking everyone to cross edges. Think about this being an edge. The tip of my fingers is an edge that people cross. They cross from something really familiar to them that feels normal and natural to something very strange. And um, so what I want to tell you is that as you help people cross edges, as you help them become something more than what they already are, or maybe actually more of who they already are, which happens, right? As you do that, just expect some early wins and um, with those people that are close to the edge and expect some long road ahead with people who are not close to that edge, not close to just jumping over. Yeah. So here's the, here's the main thing that can help people move over the edge. Until people see a better way for themselves through the use of Agile, they won't cross the edge. Why in the world would they? What they've been doing has been successful at least enough to keep them alive. So what's the gain of moving across the edge? So as you help people move across the edge, whatever it is, my biggest piece of mentoring advice for you is to go where it's easy. As my business partner Michael Spade says, don't go where you're not wanted. Yeah. Now, maybe the managers in question here have such a big influence over the team that that would be a natural place for you to go next. And pay attention. If their feet are pointed away from you, metaphorically speaking, every time you talk to them, then they're not going to cross the edge anytime soon. So it might be a better strategy, even though it doesn't make logical sense, to go with whomever is close to the edge. Because what happens is, as several people cross the edge, other people go. So the main skill when encountering this kind of resistance, whether the resistance is out or whether it's underground, the main skill, believe it or not, is listening. Listen. Listen to what they're really saying. Not what you hope them to say. Not what you want them to say. Not what you would think an Agile team member would say. But listen to what they're really saying. And hear what they love about the current way, the non-Agile way, of doing work. Until you honor what they love, and until you help them say what they don't love, there's no way they're going to help let you help them cross that edge. They won't trust you, right? So listening is the huge, huge skill here. People have to feel that you get who they are and where they are before they'll let you move them. Yeah. So if you have a tendency to convince, stop convincing. Yes, providing information might be useful. Maybe people don't know how good it is over here on the Agile side. So you could provide, provide information about what the role shift may be, you know, maybe information about how successful it is. But then notice if they're buying it. If they're not buying it, then maybe you have a tendency to continue convincing. 
if you continue to convince, they're just going to dig in their heels more and not buy it even more. Yeah. So if they're not, if you're not getting through and you realize you're, you're starting to get a little bit strident and a little bit convincing, then just back off, just back off. Now, some stuff that can help you in the Coaching Agile Teams book, that whole chapter called Coaches Agile Coach, talks about the skill of listening and the skill of powerful questions. These are really useful here. It also, uh, there's a section in there that tells you about um, what to do when you don't particularly like the person you have to coach, or they frustrate you or drive you nuts. So that's a good section to look at as well. So what I need to tell you is that you may go with, with a given person, you may go through several little encounters where you're asking questions and listening to them, maybe providing information, maybe helping them visualize what over the edge looks like for them. Um, and take heart. It might look like nothing is happening on the surface, but typically things are happening internally with people and you are making a difference, even though you might think that this one little encounter was a failure. Keep trying those little encounters and keep working with people who are already close to the edge. The other people are not worth the time. All right, hope this helps. Bye for now.